this season, we've explored a variety of integrated pest management tools, including cultural and physical controls. Today we begin to explore another set of tools, the biological controls. You might remember me introducing these last season when we released lady beetles and lacewings into our vegetable garden. Biological control is the use of what I call the three P's, predators, pathogens, and parasitoids to reduce or control pests. And they do this through one of three actions. They might reduce the pest population. They can also delay it so that you can grow your crop before they become a problem. And the third strategy would be through preventing a pest problem altogether. Now today we're going to take a close look at two of these peas, the predators and the parasitoids. Now most of us are familiar with what a predator is. It's an animal that eats another animal or prey item. In biological control, mainly we're working with predators that are insects and their prey items are other insects or they might be uh, mites or snails or another type of pest in the garden. Now, the insect world is incredibly diverse. There are over one million known species. To put that into perspective, all the other animals on Earth total up only 32,000 species. So 32,000 animals to one million insects. Now, of those insects, 40% are beetles. Beetles belong to the insect order Coleoptera, which means sheath wing, and that refers to this hardened outer wing that covers the beetle's body. It's a little protective layer, and it is actually a modified wing, and then beneath that is a membranous wing, which they use to fly. They're not very strong flyers, but they can fly short distances. There's some very common and well-known predators among the beetles, including the lady beetle, and the lightning beetle, or firefly. And then there's a close look-alike to the lightning beetle, and that's a soldier beetle. Now these three are all wonderful, wonderful predators. They're gonna eat a lot of soft-bodied, small insects in the landscape. It's also important to be able to recognize the larvae. This is a lady beetle larvae, and people see this in the landscape quite often and wonder, what is that thing? Um, it's really important to recognize that's not a pest, that's a, a beneficial insect, and that's a predator. Now the other very, very common beetles in our landscape are the ground beetles. These are what we think of when we think the word beetle. They're very typical um, black, shiny beetles. And as their name suggests, they live on the ground. They tend to be active at night and hide beneath rocks and logs and, and debris during the day. The same thing is true of the rove beetle, which has a very long slender body and it has shorter wings. You can see that here, it just has these really shortened uh, wings. It doesn't really fly a great deal. And then my favorite beetle of all here, we have the tiger beetle with its beautiful iridescent and blue-green coloration. The larvae of these make little pits and we tend to find them in sandy soil. They'll make little pits where they feed on ants and other insects that find their way into the pit. Now the next big group of predators are the true bugs or hemiptera. This is the only group where the word bug is actually accurately used. And they're characterized by kind of a flattened back and then their wing is hard at the top and membranous towards the end and it creates this little diamond shaped patch where we see the membranous wings overlap. This one here is an assassin bug, well named because he's a voracious feeder. And we can see this little ridge on its back. This is a wheel bug. We see them quite a bit in the landscape um, this time of year. And this is a smaller assassin bug. So you can see that they come in many shapes and sizes. And then next we have a nabid. And the nabids are a little bit smaller. They're kind of a drab brown and they really kind of blend into the landscape. We don't see them out there very often, but they're actively feeding on our insects. And then we have an even smaller one, the big-eyed bug, and very well named. He certainly does have large eyes. He's going to also feed on aphids and other small insects in the landscape. The next group we have are flies, and we don't really often think of flies as being predators, but there are a couple of very good predators. This one is the robber fly, and he has these really large, strong legs and uses those to grab its prey and hold on to it. And it can really feed on some quite large insects. This is a very strong fly. Next to him is a much smaller one. This is the flower fly or hover fly, 
and it's named very well because it tends to hover around flowers. Um, we see them a lot and think of them that they're bees because they have this black and yellow coloration. So a lot of times people mix them up with bees. And one way you can always tell a fly from a bee is that flies only have two wings, um, two membranous wings for flying. Their second set of wing is reduced into little knobs called halteres that help them steer. That's why flies are such great flyers. And then another group that we don't think of as being predators are the wasps and even ants. Ants and wasps are predatory. They feed on insects. And um, I always encourage people to try to protect wasp nests in their landscape rather than destroy them unless they're in a place where they're causing some sort of trouble. But they really are very beneficial to us in our gardens. And then this little beauty is called a lacewing. This is from the order Neuroptera, which means nerve wing. And if you look at their large membranous wings, they're just this little network of veins running through. These are very, very common in the landscape. And uh, equally common are their larvae, which are wonderful predators. Uh, we released some of them last year in our garden. They look like little alligators and they feed on a, a variety of soft-bodied insects. Now another group of predators that's very important and a little bit underappreciated are the spiders. Here we have a wolf spider. They look rather intimidating, but they're rather harmless, although they are wonderful predators. The same is true of the tarantula. A lot of people aren't comfortable seeing them in the landscape, but they're, they're pretty much stay to themselves and they do a wonderful job feeding on those ground nesting insects. Um, a little less intimidating, I suppose, are the jumping spiders, which are also very prevalent and active hunters in the garden. We also have scorpions, another underappreciated uh, creature in the garden, but again, a very important predator. Uh, this year they seem to be out in large numbers, perhaps due to the strange weather. And then one last uh, predator we have here is the centipede, and this is a really large specimen. Uh, it was collected in Payne County here. Typically we see a little bit smaller uh, relatives of this guy, but they are all again very good predators. Now they can bite or sting. It feels a little like a wasp sting, um, but if we leave them alone they won't really bother us. They tend to hang out on the ground underneath rocks and other things like that. So the next group of natural enemies are the parasitoids and these sound like parasites which we might be familiar with that grow inside of us and feed on a host but the main difference is parasites tend not to kill their host whereas parasitoids do kill their host but slowly over time and they have a real interesting life cycle the adult parasitoid will lay its egg either inside or on the outside of a host insect and then the larvae will feed on that host and as they develop they um, impact the health of that host and eventually it will die the larvae will pupate and they'll emerge as adults now the the vast majority of these parasitoids belong to the hymenoptera or wasps now they're stingless wasps meaning they don't sting us they use their ovipositor to lay eggs. Now most of these are incredibly small. You could fit about five on the head of a pin and so they're hard to see and we don't notice them being very active in the garden. But I selected a few larger uh, ichneumonids here and one of the interesting things I wanted to point out is the ovipositor. That's the egg laying structure and the length of this ovipositor correlates to the host item. So this one is going to be using that really long ovipositor to, it rubs it back and forth to drill into a woody stem. And some of these can drill several inches into a thick branch to reach, oh, a beetle larvae or something developing inside of a tree. So it's a really remarkable structure. Amazing that it can drill through that. The other big group of parasitoids are, again, flies, and this is a tachinid fly. That's the main group of parasitic flies. Um, and this one looks quite a bit like our house fly or a bottle fly. Um, they do have quite a bit of a hairy abdomen. Now, we looked at a wide variety of insects and their relatives today, but this is just really a small handful 
of the natural enemies that are active every day in our gardens. And in addition to these, we also have birds and bats, uh, reptiles and amphibians that are out there actively hunting our insect pests. So it's really important that we do what we can to protect this natural source of pest control.